Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel, Anime Orange, where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it. And I wanted to do a sort of tips and tricks video. I've done tips and tricks videos before, but it has been a while since the last time I did one. And I thought with the start of the new year, in kind of in addition to a previous video that I made very recently, I thought I would revisit or at least elaborate on some things, kind of go over some tips and tricks again. Not too long ago, just a few days ago, I put out a video kind of welcoming the newcomers. You know, we're in the very early stages of 2020, and there's a lot of new people who've gotten Christmas gifts and Metal Earth models and 3D Metal models, and they're just being introduced to it. And I made a video talking about some basics, tools, and where to find them and stuff like that. My last news video, I elaborated that on even more. And kind of keeping with that theme, I'm currently working on a cathedral model. This is one of the parts, I'm not done with it yet. But as I'm working on that model, I ran into a situation that you do encounter sometimes with these models. And it gave me the idea that there's there's another tip and trick I should talk about. And that is looking ahead. With the easier models, it's not usually that big a deal, but as you climb into the moderate difficulty, the expert difficulty, and other brands, larger models, you're going to want to spend some time looking ahead in the instructions. It's always a good idea, even with the simple models, to look ahead a little bit to see how things are going to play out. Because there might be situations where if you do things one way, you're going to get yourself in a jam later on down the road. And this model has a lot of spires on it, and there's just one corner piece that had some really good examples of some of the things you need to look out for as far as building these models. So I'm going to jump to a clip that I pulled out and did some explanation of what I'm doing to show you what I'm talking about. So here's the situation. I'm working on the towers to the cathedral. And I've already got this one mostly completed. And I'm going to have to do some straightening up. But these little corner pieces right here that I'm adding on, they take a little bit of thought. And I thought this was an excellent example to demonstrate why it takes some thought. Because you've got this piece here that folds up. It has a couple of these tiny pieces put on it, but two of the tiny pieces get put on two of these. And then all of this goes on top of this, which folds up to go in one of these corners here. So this part takes some thought if you want to do it without breaking, because these are gold or brass pieces. The brass pieces are a little softer. They break easier. They're less forgiving. So you can't make hardly any mistakes with this or you run a high risk of breaking it. So you can't put something on and say, oh, I made a mistake, I need to take it off. You're not gonna be able to get away with that every time, if at all. Thing is, two of these tiny pieces go on top, the other two go on this, which goes on the bottom. And this thing has to fold up, and if you notice, in this corner right here, there's an interesting angle. This part is gonna have to fold and some tiny angles. This top part flips down, so this side is going to have to follow and trace this 90 degree inward in, 90 degree out, 90 degree in. And that's going to be difficult to do with all of the parts on top of it. Not impossible, but more challenging. So one thing you have to think, do I make this fold and then put all the parts on it or do I put the parts on it and make the fold? Because once you fold all this up, you might have more of a difficult time getting into the back to secure the tabs. I've tried this a couple of different ways. So the way that I've come up with is I'm going to put these top pieces on, which will cover it slightly, but still leave me enough room that I believe that I can do this. But you might also fold this completely and then add parts. Either way is, is rather possible. But... There's compromises. I'm not going to fold it all the way up. This is the way I've started doing it. The other thing you have to think of is which parts do you put on first and last? Do you put on this tiny part first up top and then add the lower part that has the smaller and bigger part? Or do you put the smaller and bigger part on first, then the top tiny part? 
which one's going to overlap the other. If we look at this finished and shaped one, you can kind of see the smaller part goes underneath the larger part. And the first time I did this, I didn't have an example to go by. I had to figure it out for myself. But this is an example of why it takes some time to think ahead. So I'm going to start by adding this little part. And I didn't fold it all the way. I'm going to take and very carefully put a tiny little curve in the tabs themselves. Try to anyway. I think that's as close as I'm going to get because I think I bent a little too much. And use these pointy tweezers to help guide this part into place on the top section. That fell in really easily. Holding it in place, we go around, twist these back tabs at least a little to keep that in place. There we go. We've got one part on. Grab another. Pretty much do the same. hook these tabs slightly so I don't want to accidentally fold this all the way shut it'll be difficult to open it back up and there we go popped in place now what I'm doing is rather smooth looking here because I've already done this several times so I've kind of got a knack for it the first time that I tried to do this I was a bit more clumsy and stumbling now the next part is we have to take this same tiny part we've been adding up here but instead we're putting it on this part this part here and then adding both of these together so let's shape another one Give it a bit of a fold, slightly curl, or try to slightly curl those tabs. So that they're pointing more straight and fall into place, hopefully with ease. Try to drop this on here. There we go. Now, some more thinking ahead. This part has two tabs or two sides that fold in slightly I'm gonna twist this twist these tabs a bit to hold them so I don't drop it this part has two side pieces that fold in but those side pieces aren't very wide they're not as wide as those tabs are long not really so what's gonna happen with those twisted tabs sticking straight out once I fold this these two sides up the tabs are going to stick out farther and this part is not going to sit flush where it needs to on top of here one alternative instead of twisting them i could try to fold them inward or fold them over i'm not going to be able to fold them outward because once i fold the sides up it straightens the tab the part falls off so i would fold them inward but as you see there's not much room so they're going to have to fold in an overlapping fashion that's possible and I tried it, but it wasn't as secure because one tab can lay flat and the other one doesn't quite. They're so short, I didn't want to risk coming back apart. So what I opted to do is I've twisted them, and then I'm going to take and then pinch them inward. And hopefully that will give it enough clearance that the sides, when they fold up, will no longer be a problem. They've got a twist in them, so there's a kink that will, in most cases, keep the piece from popping out. But they're still folded slightly to allow room. It's a little bit of a tight area folding this up because those tabs are there. Got the sides folded up. If we were to look at it from a side angle, the tabs are not, inside tabs are not sticking past the sides. 
that should work. But that is one of the things that you have to think about when you're putting parts together. Is it going to work if I twist the tabs or should I fold them? Which way should I do? So now we add this part. And if you look, when I'm adding this part, it's sitting over the other tiny part. Which is why I said you're going to need to do that top part first. But actually, before I put this part on, let me try and show that better. If I line these tabs up where they're supposed to go, let me just go ahead and do that. Let's do that. I've got the part sat on there. And if you look, it's overlapping the other part. So you can't put this assembly on first and then easily get that underneath. This assembly on top is going to be on the way. So you got to look ahead to make sure that you're putting it on in an order that's going to work. But I'm not going to twist these tabs. I'm going to take that off. Because what I'm going to do now is try to shape this part with the angles that it needs while I still have some room to do so. And I'm going to need to do a little bit of pushing to make it work. Because while I don't have all the parts on, I have some, and they are getting a little bit in the way. But I believe I can still make it work. It does count, call for a little bit of pushing strategically. And there we've pretty much got it shaped, not quite. Let's see if we can't flip that down. Oh. There we go. That's in place and secure the tab. And now this part is mostly in its final shape. The other thing I have to do is there's two more side pieces that have to fold in even more. I'm not going to do those yet because I still want to leave this back side open for when I attach the remaining parts. Now, I could have folded this first hand and then attached these tiny parts. I kind of hesitate to do that because those parts are so tiny. I'm afraid it'll get a little too fidgety, but it could work either way. But now, I'm going to attach this assembly with its two pieces on top of one. And I still have room in the back to twist the tabs. And here, twisting the tabs is not an issue because there's going to be plenty of room, although you are really close to that corner when you'll have to have the right tool to get in there and twist and have enough room to twist. assembly to go on top of the assembly that goes on top of another assembly. This is a complex model. I'm going to give these tabs a twist. And then I'm going to pinch them in as much as I can so that they have both a kink and a fold probably not the most secure thing but these parts are just decorative parts sitting on top and that should be enough fold up the sides We 
try to set this part where it belongs. I swear it's almost like they didn't really need to leave a proper gap, but we're moving forward anyway. Really close to the side. There we go. Got all the parts are assembled on top now. We don't have to worry about that tight fold because we've taken care of it now. All we have to do is fold in these two side pieces. Because we're finished. And there we go. This assembly is done. It's a little bit loose. Parts a little bit wobbly. Unfortunate. One thing you could do is carefully drop a little bit of glue down there and let it dry in these holes at the end. Or UV glue. You could squirt some UV glue down in there and harden it. And that would help to hold the parts into place. But an important thing is you've managed to assemble it. I don't think anything's going to fall off. It's loose, but it's not going to fall off. And you didn't break anything. And in this situation, the last thing to do would be to assemble this assembled assembly. Yes, I'm being a bit silly now. On top of the rest. And the more I put this together, the trickier that gets. see myself coming back after this is assembled and folding some things over. I feel like something's catching here and not doing what it should do. There we go. There's a tab getting caught on top there. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing to do it and put it on the camera at the same time. There we go. And that, that one little part, to get it done properly, takes a little bit of forethought. I feel that was a pretty good example of, of times that you want to plan ahead as you're putting something together. Now in the situation here, this is a micro world model. The instructions aren't highly detailed. It does take a little bit of interpreting to figure out how things come together. With this particular model, there are a lot of duplicate parts and they tried to color in duplicate parts like Metal Earth does, but they didn't get all the parts and they actually switched colors partway through with one of the parts. So there's a fair amount of interpretation. Metal Earth is usually a little bit better about that. But even with Metal Earth, you run into situations where you may look at something and go, you know, there's a little bit better way to do this or there's more than one way to do this. You want to occasionally look ahead of the instructions and see where you're going to whether or not you want to twist this part or fold this part because sometimes the instructions will say to twist a tab but if you look at it that tab sits with very little clearance underneath on another part and a twisted tab is going to keep that from sitting properly and I've had several situations where that happens there may be a part that you need to fold up and shape but the instructions are telling you how to shape it but they're not necessarily telling you you need to shape it like that now for instance, with the part that goes on the side, there were two pieces that I didn't fold in until I got the other pieces attached to it because I wanted to leave myself room to be able to reach in, twist, and fold those tabs before I closed it up. That's something that happens in a lot of other models. You want to look ahead to see whether or not you should fold this part all the way up, leave it open, or if you should twist or fold the tab, if there's going to be clearances. You never know what kind of oddball situation you might find yourself in. There's been times where maybe I'm supposed to attach a delicate antenna, but then I still have more things to assemble. I'll hold off on attaching that antenna until some of those other things are assembled because some of those delicate antennas you might bump with your hand as you're putting it together and bend them. Bend them too much and they break. Which, another thing that I frequently do when I'm working with something that has antennas or thin parts hanging off, 
and I accidentally bend them as I'm still putting the model together, I'll leave them that way instead of trying to keep straightening them up. Because initially, originally when I started putting these models together, I'd say bend one of these towers, these little spikes over, and ah, oh, let me bend that back straight. But then I still have more parts to put on. I actually bend it over again. Crud, let me bend it back straight. And I have some more parts to put on, bend it over again. But every time I'm bending it back and forth, I'm weakening the part. And there's a higher chance it's going to break off. There have been situations where I have put on some delicate antenna or something that pokes out and I bend it by mistake and I just left it that way until I was done with the build or at least done with that section before I start straightening things out because you don't want to accidentally bend things back and forth and back and forth and break them off. So that's another trick, another tip for you when you're building these models. Look ahead. Try not to bend things any more than you need to because these metals, especially this brass, the silver is too, but the brass is even worse. If you bend these parts too many times back and forth, they will weaken and eventually crack and fall off. So sometimes you might want to look ahead to see how weak is this part. Should I even bother trying to do some of the delicate shaping now, or can I wait until later in the build to do it? after I've attached more parts so that I'm not shaping it just to accidentally knock it out to try and put it back in to accidentally knock it out. Look ahead to see if I put this part on now am I going to have trouble getting this part on later. There's been times where tabs were along a seam and I folded the part up and I think X, the X-Wings, the original X-Wings is an example of this. If I fold the sides in on the part that the engine piece goes on to then I'm going to have a hard time getting to that tab and twisting and folding it because it's right along that seam but if I add that part, twist and fold the tabs and then fold the sides of the other piece up it's going to go a lot smoother things are going to turn out a lot better. So look ahead in the instructions. Have an idea of where you're going before you get yourself into a situation. If there's any question, look ahead. Look at 360 views. Look at pictures on the box to see where you're going with something before you end up in a bad situation. I'm going to leave it at that for today's tips and tricks. Looking ahead in the instructions. It seems like such a simple thing, but even I forget to do it sometimes. So try to keep that in mind. Any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. As always, thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.